So let's take a look at David's equation and see if we can figure out why it seems to be a little bit different here. His equation says x equals the absolute value of y minus 2. So the big difference here is that instead of having y on the outside and then x in the absolute value, we've got it the other way around. So let's see what that does differently to our graph here. If we make our xy chart, if we were to pick values for x, then we'd have to figure out what y was so that we could subtract 2 from it and then take the absolute value of it to equal the number we chose. That sounds like the hard way around. So let's plug values in for y instead and find out what x equals. So let's choose, um, let's say, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4 for y. So if y is negative 2, then we get x equals the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2, which gives us the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. So if x is negative 2, y is 4, or if y is negative 2, x is 4. So then if y is 0, we get x equals the absolute value of 0 minus 2. Well, that's negative 2, so x is the absolute value of negative 2. So x would be 2 if y is 0. If y is 2, then we get x equals the absolute value of 2 minus 2. Well, that's 0, so x would be 0. And then if x is the absolute value of 4 minus 2, then we get the absolute value of 2, which is 2. So we get x is 2 whether y is 0 or 4. That's interesting. So let's plot these points and see what we come up with. x is 4, y is negative 2. So we have a point right here. x is 2, y is 0. So there's a point right here. x is 0, y is 2. There's a point right there. And x is 2, y is 4. So there's a point up here. Aha, I see. The reason he was confused is because if we have x on the outside and y on the inside, instead of our v shape going up and down like we have before, the v shape goes sideways. So here we have our v going off in this direction and in this direction. And our absolute value then still has that same characteristic v, but it looks a little odd because these numbers end up being on top of each other instead of beside each other. So every point then is going to have a, another one that's opposite of it going up and down instead of going left and right. So there you go. If your x is outside and your y is inside, expect your absolute value to be on its side, one side or the other. And just like when you were graphing the absolute values and had numbers inside with the x, just like they moved left or right based on the number inside, you can see here that when x is outside, that number inside moves up or down. We had a negative 2, so we moved up 2. If we'd had a positive 2 in there, it would have moved down 2.